Oh, you gotta wear a wig, 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 wig if you wanna be famous. You gotta wear a wig, 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 wig if you wanna be smart. Because a wig will hide the worst of all your features. Yes, a wig will really help you play the part. Hello, I'm Bette Midler, and this is part of my life in looks. Okay. This costume was uh, made by a woman named Patton Siprot. She was the costumer for Fiddler on the Roof. Fiddler on the Roof was just a phenomenon uh, in New York. And on this show, I met a hairdresser named William Hennessy, and he became my best friend. His customers called him Mr. G, and he, I became Miss M. He started calling me Miss M when I was in uh, this show, and he became one of my best friends. When I was finally asked to do my act, my 20-minute act, uh, in, in a bathhouse in uh, New York City. He filled in the, gap, the gay gaps that I didn't really understand, and we wrote jokes together, and uh, he was my bestie for, for many, many years. Here I am with Barry Manilow, who turned out to be the greatest musical director I ever could have found at this point. It was just an accident. He found the same things funny that I found funny. And he had a vast musical knowledge of all kinds of uh, pop music. And he would make suggestions, and I would make suggestions. And he never said no. He never said, that song stinks, don't do it. I am wearing a hot pink sequined gown with a pair of platform shoes. I was one of the early adopters of platform shoes. And I remember going to Paris for the first time in 1974 with my platform shoes and my tight little jeans and my little chubby uh, fur and um, fake fur and I remember being surrounded by a group of school children in uniforms and they were all laughing at me and pointing at my shoes and I couldn't figure out was I too early or was I too late because you know how the French are. This is from the movie Beaches. Cece's character has very big bold looks and some of those costumes were or my own. And some of them, I went to a thrift shop in Santa Monica and bought, and they were shares. They were shares old wardrobe. When we were doing the press for that show, for this movie, I told them that, of course, nobody believed me, but it was really true. In certain scenes, I'm wearing shares old wardrobe. In the scene with the white dress, that is Christian Lacroix of when he was at Patou. I ran over there, and I was in Paris, I ran over there and I got a whole bunch of stuff. One of my dearest friends, a guy named Bob DeMarra, who was a, a costumer, um, was the costumer on this picture. And at the, uh, in the middle of the picture, his, his partner got sick and uh, was, you know, was diagnosed with AIDS and he left the picture. This whole picture was a, a, a blessing and a joy to make, but it had, it had sorrowful moments too. Yeah, this movie really spoke to people. And yeah, the first time I saw it, I, I wept copious tears. My daughter didn't see it until she was about, I would say maybe 17. It undid her too. It's a love story. And um, it, has, it, has, it has everything. Here's a joyful moment. And this is one of the great highlights of my life because this was built by my friend the costumer, Bob DeMara. It's an apron. It went over a little leotard thing. This was Johnny Carson's last show. He was so, so important in my life. He pushed me along and gave me a, such a big break. I never expected uh, him to be so kind. And it's so funny because still to this day, people still come up to me on the street and say, I love what you did for Johnny Carson. He was so loved, so beloved. And uh, I personally thought he left too soon. This is one of the highlights of my life and I'm talking as a woman who's had a lot of highlights. I've been very lucky. This, of course, is the great Winifred Sanderson of the Sanderson Sisters, the first Hocus Pocus movie, costumed by Mary Voigt. And she, the palette she chose was blues and greens and purples. And I told my people, my hair and makeup people, that I wanted to look like the Red Queen in Alice in Wonderland. I wanted the hair to be this certain shape, this sort of heart-shaped, and I wanted to have no eyebrows, and I wanted to have just little tiny little red specks and have just two little, I wanted that, I actually designed that makeup myself. And I was very, very proud of it. The nails are very curved, and the teeth, and I wanted the teeth as well. So we found uh, Kevin Haney who, who built the teeth. The costume is sensational, but my feeling was that the, the wig really sold it. You know, the, the triangle on, the, on, the, on my shaped face and the streaks of blonde in the hair and the little blonde halo around the face really lit the face up. 
She's such a scenery chewer, and she's so unapologetic. She's not exactly cruel, but she does have a real mean streak. And I just loved her. While she is very, very tough, she does have that vulnerable side, and she is insecure, and she, that, and she does get weepy. You know, she's, it's just got that close to the surface. But that's the thing about comedy. It's only a quarter of an inch away from tragedy. This picture is the poster of the movie, and we got suits and we got cigars. And I must say, we all look terrific. This is one of the most fun sh shoots I ever had. This was what they decided on. This is what the advertising people decided we should look like. But in real, in the re really in the movie, we didn't look like this at all. The first picture I made, which was the rose, I wore my own hair and I practically went bald. So I decided, oh, it's wigs for me. So every time I make a picture, I start with the hair. If I don't have the hair right, I don't, I don't have the character. I simply just don't have the character. And the last uh, image is the, those white suits, which became iconic. I was really, really surprised. When I first saw them, I said, oh, no way. White shoes, that's like rule number one in show business, make your feet look big. <laughs> but they talked me into it. Let's see, what's next? This is Bathhouse Betty. This was a sort of homage to Mae West because she wore, she was about my size and she stood on a uh, an orange crate, so that she looked really tall. She insisted on looking tall. She always wore platforms. And this was made for me by Bob Demara. I always told him, Bob, you gotta make me look tall. Well. I have this organization called New York Restoration Project. We clean and green parks in underserved neighborhoods all over New York City. And every year we would do a Halloween party. I did 25 years of Halloween parties, and I gotta say, I tried everything. This is my homage to the chef world. I was supposed to wear an entirely different costume, but I got a black eye uh, the night, uh, not the night, yeah, the night before. I got a black eye the night before the, the gala, and I had, to, I had to adjust, I had to improvise. I sent my husband down to the uniform store to get a pair of chef's pants and a chef's outfit and kitchen clogs, and uh, this is what we came up with. Let me point out to you that I was, I'm wearing Crocs. Uh, I think the, the Crocs really sell the idea. You know, it was the time of the, the celebrity chefs, and I thought, well, why not? You, well, you had to wear Crocs, that's what they wore. And of course, don't forget the cleaver. <laughs> the cleaver doesn't hurt either. Oh my. Here I am with Mark Jacobs. He made this for me, it's a, it's a custom order. I went down to the uh, studio and I looked at fabrics. I think that we decided that because it was wheels, these wheels sort of spoke to the theme. And the headdress seemed to speak to it too. It came in a green, it came in a purple, it came in, and I chose this because I was just showing gray hair at the time, and I thought, mm, gray. So, <laughs> these are the gray years. Well, this was a real triumph. This is my costume for Hello, Dolly. She always wears red, and, and, the, and the set is always red, and this is by Santa Loquasto for the last production, the last great production of uh, Hello, Dolly on Broadway, which was a very big, big hit for me. I have to say, there was a great, big, greatest bunch of actors and dancers and singers that I ever worked with in my life. Absolutely fantastic. I loved it. For my efforts, I was rewarded with a Tony. And Michael Kors, he made this dress for me, another custom order, and he was really, really happy to do it. I think it's a great dress. The only thing I wish is I wish I had worn my silver hair. I think I'm wearing a wig here too. I wish I had worn my silver hair, but hey, easy come, easy go. Here I am with my brilliant daughter, Sophie von Haselberg, and Michael Kors in the back at the Met Ball. This was the, this was the camp theme, and I can't imagine why he invited me to be his guest. But we had a lot of fun on this. He wanted to do butterflies, and for me, and fire for my daughter. We really enjoy the fittings because we've worked with uh, Lance and uh, Michael for many, many years. I've done a lot of his benefits. And we love each other so much. We go back and forth, back and forth. And I think this is a, fa a fantastic costume. I think I wanted the netting a little bit lower. I wanted a little more cleavage. I think it had been higher and I asked for it to be lower because I want to show my assets. I don't think that there's anyone who can define camp. I will be quite honest with you. Camp is such an ephemeral word. It's a word that means something different to every single person. I mean, I've read notes on camp 55 times. I still don't know what she's talking about. Camp to me is, it's an attitude, but it's also a kind of a joyousness in the ridiculous. That's what I think. Did I get to keep the outfit? Are you crazy? Of course I kept the outfit. I mean, that was actually part of the package. Come, let's go to the Met Ball and you can keep the dress. Okay. Okay, this dress is Pam Dennis, 
And the Kennedy Center Honors is absolutely the cherry on the cake in this country. So I was very determined to show off the medal and I noticed in looking at the pictures of past medals that if you didn't wear something plain as, as your background, you wouldn't see the medal. I called Pam Dennis for this and she said, oh, it's got to be either black or white. She made me a black dress and she made me the same dress in white. And I was doing fittings with her down at the, on, in the garment district with a man who makes pleating, the premier pleater in Manhattan. I've worked with magical, magical people. And I have to say, it has been, it's been a blessed life. It really has been. It's been, the, the, I, I have, how, how did this happen to me? Are you sure I'm not dreaming? I wake up every day and I say that. This, this has to be a dream. And that was my life and looks. Thank you for having me, that was so much fun.